Mark in Fort Myers, Florida. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. And thank you for your purchase of the Oakley 5142, the pliers in the 54 eye size and color pewter chrome in the O2 color code. And of course, let me start off by saying I am an authorized Oakley dealer, but as a small independent optician, I was told I'm not allowed to individually list the frames with prices on my website. So if anyone wants a pair, email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Tell me what frame, what color, what size. That's what Mark did. And I told him the price and availability of them. And so let me get started. I'm going to be cutting high index progressive Essilor Ideal Advance Transitions Extra Active Gray with the blue flash mirror for... And I almost screwed up. I almost started cutting. I put the sticker on your regular card that has your your address, email, phone number, all that stuff. So I wanted to keep it... Read, you know I'm trying to work on something now. <laughs> but uh, I'll, I'll get back to you. One of my longtime guys. He's a real good guy. He's been texting me. Um, but I put the sticker on your regular card. Usually my cards are, are grayish white. The ones you see in my videos are, are this goldenrod color. So I put the sticker on there, then I realized you paid for a video. I was about to make these without doing the video, so I had to stop everything. Let me go ahead and scan that number. You are Secret Agent 1514. No paper clip to hold that on there. Now that it's on, turn that over. And let me go ahead and get your frame out. I've never done that before. I've never cut someone's lenses when they paid for a video and I was just about to it shows I'm getting old it also shows that it's 757 Monday April 8th in my hometown and uh, 78 degrees in my hometown of course it comes with an Oakley sock slash carrying bag slash cleaning cloth in your hard case this is the pliers it comes with two plastic sleeves on the temples to keep them from rubbing together during shipping and these are the where's my flashlight Again, this is the model number 5142, the pliers in the O2 pewter color and the 54 eye size, and these are the pliers. So, really cool hinge design on there, the spring hinge, the way that's designed. But these are a semi-rimless frame, one of the larger, one of the more deeper frames, wider eye size as well. And I'm going to go ahead, because there's no frame to trace, I'm going to put two dots on this lens because I'm going to need to trace the lens itself i hold this up so i can see a white background where the wall is almost white but i need to put two dots on the same graph line which gives me a straight line if you guys miss any of that let me recap <laughs> i haven't told that in a couple of videos so i'm due pop out the original demo lens now we've just got the string that's holding it in i need this little tool for tracing the lens pull this this paper way to make the black side sticky line up see I can use this as a white background the reason I put those two dots on there there is a line on the back of here I'm making sure everything is lined up just perfectly press that on there and I'm going to trace just the right lens it's going to ask me for the bridge size which is 18 which is a preset thing if it were 17 or 19 I would enter that but we're just going to stick with 18 the little stylus is going to pop up and go around and trace the outside of the right lens here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality you buy a genuine authentic oakley frame and you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses or non-prescription fashion lenses my receipt has my federal id tax number so if you have vision insurance or unused health savings account dollars you will get reimbursed for this purchase now in just a moment the shape of the right lens will pop up onto the computer screen where I will enter your pupillary distance. Your pupillary distance is 73 divided by 2 is 36.5. Let me just double check because it is late. 73 divided by 2, 36.5. Let's do this. Enter the plus button several times till we get up to 36.5. I want to raise the optical center up to 26. That's the invisible bifocal seg height. I'm going to change the layout screen to progressive. That blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. Your eye is just above that and outset by about a millimeter. Not inset, but outset. I've got your lenses prepped. 
place that onto the platform, grab two blocks. It already has the double-sided adhesive stickers attached. Pull the paper away to make the other side sticky. Line up the magnet. And progressives, these, the Essilor Ideal Advance, which is a digital premium progressive lens, freeform progressive lens, has a four drop, meaning that it drops four millimeters down to the 180 meridian. So that dot is where your pupil will be is four millimeters higher than these other two dots which tells me that it's oriented and they're just right. By the way, you know how you can tell if it's a high index lens? You can tell by the sound, it's different sound. And you can be able to, I'm gonna be able to tell by the smell. You guys are gonna miss out on that. I wish there were smell-o-vision so you guys would have the pleasure of smelling what a high, 167 high index lens smells like while it's being cut. So, hit that button. The arm's gonna come down, place a block onto the right lens. We're gonna do the same thing now for the left lens. Pull the paper away, make the black side sticky, line up the same pupillary distance, same optical center height naturally. The PD can be different, but the seg height for the bifocal will be the same on both eyes. Make sure the lens is large enough, and it is. And, oops, let's get everything lined up in there just perfectly. Hit that button, the arm's going to come down and place a block onto the left lens. Now this is the edger, this is what's going to do all the work while I run my mouth. The diamond coated wheel that's going to grind away your lens material is this one. This wheel in the center that normally the lens goes into the valley. It's just going to go to flatten this out. And let me show you, let me show you something else too here. I'm going to show you the grooving wheel that's going to cut the groove into the lens so it stays inside the frame. Now this is the optical sawdust, also known as Schwarf, that comes off during the safety bevel. I'm going to clean all that off of there. Come over there, toss that in the trash can. The dust bin, I was just coordinating with someone in the UK asking if I shipped to the UK. But this wheel is what's going to cut the, it's a little sharp blade, it's going to cut the groove into the lens. For those of you keeping score at home, it's going to cut 0.6, 6 tenths of a millimeter into the lens. Deep wise, it's going to cut a groove 6 tenths of a millimeter wide as well. This is the wheel that does the safety bevel. This is the heavy, fine grit sandpaper that does a safety bevel on the back concave surface of the lens or the front convex surface of the lens. Let's go ahead and back that up to the screen. Press that on there firmly. Wake up the computer to show it as shape job number ID number 1514. Well, it's on 1514 on there. Shows that this is a grooved lens and not a V-shaped bevel. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens. Oh, the other thing I need to do is mark that it's high index. It's not plastic. It's not polycarbonate. It is high index. I am going to put a light safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens and a heavier safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens. Go ahead and press the sticker on there firmly. Place the magnet into the chuck or as I like to call it, the Charles, because I don't know this machine well enough to call it a chuck. Hit the start button, the door closes, the clamp shuts, the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to go into the frame, and then the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once, it's measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know where to place the bevel for the best cosmetic look on these lenses in this frame. Now here's something you normally don't see. Water will spray onto the lens for the duration of this cutting cycle. That's because plastic, high index plastic, and Trivex lenses cut wet. Meaning that, woo, that stinks. Meaning that water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle. As I mentioned, your lenses are made out of 167 high index material. It has a sulfur type of smell to it, or like onions, rot, rotten onions of that. So that is what I am smelling. It's also a little gunkier. They also cut faster. That's a nice thing. But in just a moment, it's going to go down to flatten it out before getting the, the grooving wheel. Yeah, it has a... It stinks a little bit. I won't lie. It does. The building that I'm in, this is actually perfect timing, the building that I'm in is a shared building. Somehow the smell gets up into the rafters and people smell it, so I wait until the end of the day after everyone has gone home so it doesn't disturb anybody. 
the first time I did it, some people thought, something's going on, what's that smell, what's that smell? It's just me cutting high index lenses. Now you did get the transitions extra active. You also got the blue flash mirror, which I will demonstrate. By the way, this frame sells for $253, the Oakley 5142 pliers. The Essilor Ideal Advanced Digital Freeform Progressive Lens adds $149.99. The upgrade to high index, that's normally in polycarbonate. The upgrade to high index lenses was another $59.99. Now the upgrade to Transitions Extra Active Gray is $99.99. Now it may come in brown. I do know that you cannot get the Extra Active Green in 167. I'm not saying you won't be able to in the upcoming years, but right now you can only get it in gray and brown. The mirror coating in one of six colors, silver, gold, green, blue, red, or pink. You got the blue at $69.99. Normally for a total of $6.32, but you also got paid to have the stunning, witting, charming, handsome, all-knowing, and all-clever optician cutting your lenses. Now, that adds $25. Now, the all-charming, all-knowing, all-loving, all-witty, wonderful clever opticians not available so i cut your lenses tonight i should refund you that 25 dollars since you're stuck with me okay so now it's already cut the groove into the lens while i was yapping my mouth we'll show you for the next one it's doing the safety bevel on the front convex surface now high index i normally don't put a safety bevel on lenses but high index i do want to smooth everything out because there is no frame around here to protect the edge of the lens that it normally be it just toughens up and hardens the lens i always put a safety bevel on the rear surface i do a light one on the front a heavier one on the back just in case any portion of this lens comes in contact with the cheek although it probably shouldn't because of the nose pads that create nose pads create separation plastic frames sit in closer this one if it does touch the cheeks and let's let's go ahead and take care of that i'm going to separate the nose pads about another millimeter or two just to create a little bit more distance for you. But should any portion of this lens ever cut, touch your cheek with a big hug or something like that, the back of the lens will be nice and smooth. So I'm going to take everything out, dry everything off, and let's go ahead and get this lens mounted. So not bad for a lens that has a total of 550 diopters of power. I'm going to go ahead and mount this in there. Now what everyone sees is this 20 pound monofilament that holds the, the lens in by the bottom. What you don't see, there's a matching one in the top of the metal. You have a groove that's cutting to a metal and then a figure eight liner. It's called a figure eight because if you imagine just a two story snowman instead of three like you normally see in the movies. Part of that goes into the frame. The other part is protruding from the frame that goes into the groove at the top of the lens. I just want a quick inspection to make sure all the optical sawdust is out, and it is. We're going to tuck the lens in at the outside corner. Use this, this strap, start at the outside corner. And when you hear that pop, it goes into the lens. I put my finger on there and slide that out. Let's go ahead and start doing the left lens. Flip that over to L, press that on there firmly. Hit start. Just like before, the door closes, the clamp shuts. The lens again is going to be traced by what used to be two white styluses. Making sure the lens is large enough to fit into the frame and you can see as it's going around tracing the shape of the left side of the frame. And just like before measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know where to place the groove so you have the least amount of cosmetic blemishes of which you barely have any in this frame. We talked about that beforehand. I always let them know the thickness of this lens in a semi rimless. I also let them know about the high index capability of a lens in a semi rimless. Let me go ahead and pop this block off. It is no longer needed. Pull the sticker away. Throw that back in there. Add to my sticker collection. Come down here to the lensometer. Put it in over that black dot. Turn the axis wheel to 0, 1, 0, 10. In the optical field, we use three digits. And I'm going to read the power, and I am getting all goes well 450 exactly halfway between four and five in the red that's because you are very nearsighted with your glasses off you can see your fingerprint up close 
about right here once it starts to move you do have a zone that you can see with no glasses on probably about right here at your computer but instead of taking them on and off that's why you have the progressive you just keep them on for every range in between but you have 18 let's see that four times four is 16 18 steps of nearsighted correction so you're on the 18th step of a 18th rung of a ladder for far sighted with your glasses off everything is much too large that's why you can see up close great you have your eyes naturally magnified but you need 18 steps of far sighted correction to be able to see far away now once everything is the correct size you need another four steps of astigmatism correction so it's going to be a total of 22 steps of power total so we're going to check your astigmatism correction and we end up at minus 550 exactly halfway between five and six so if I grab my calculator, 5.5 times 4, which you're the 22nd rung of a ladder. So you have 18 steps of curvature this way. You have another 4 steps of curvature, which is slightly steeper this way. Now once everything is, again, with your glasses off, everything is much too large. So your lens is minified. That's where there's a minus sign. Once it's the correct size, we still have to correct for your astigmatism with another 4 steps. That is a second curvature, and it's how we line those two curves up to make everything nice and crisp. Now, Mark, you should be old enough to remember the old car radios that had a red light in them. You go around a curve in the mountains. Of course, I don't know what kind of mountains you got in Florida, but when you go around a curve, that red light starts to flicker. You hear a little static. You turn that knob just a little bit. That red light comes on, and that music sounds oh so sweet and crystal clear on FM radio. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't quit my day job. But that's what astigmatism is, the fine tune knob to make everything nice and crisp again. And we're going to turn that fine tune knob to 10. A straight line is 0 to 90 to 180. We're going to turn that fine tune knob on your right eye to 10, just past the 180 meridian. Now here's the unique thing. You have 20 steps of astigmatism correction on, um, excuse me, on far-sighted correction on your left eye. You have another full one diopter of astigmatism correction. So it's going to be a total of 24 steps but you're at the 170th meridian on your left eye so we're going to turn that 90 to 170 just shy of the 180 you would think that 10 and 170 are very far apart they're not they're only 10 degrees away from each other on a 180 meridian let's use the fine tip on your right eye you're at 10 degrees on your left eye you're 10 degrees away from the 180 on 170 so that's kind of unique to me no one else really cares these first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. This last number tells me could be anywhere from 0 to 180. And I just think it's unique, since I cut lenses all day long, that you're 10 degrees away from the 180 meridian on both eyes. Again, that number could be anywhere from 0 to 180. But, when you've been doing this long as I have, no two pairs of glasses are ever the same. But it's just unique that you have 10 degrees away. That's kind of cool. Again, to me and me only. So let's go ahead and take the, pop out the original demo lenses of which you will be receiving. Take your lens, put it into the frame, the groove of the top of the frame. Make sure that string is tucked in there. Push that into that frame there. That is the surplus of the string. You have two holes on each side. A string goes in the bottom hole, wraps around, sticks in the top. Same on this side. That little loop, the lens puts fresh pressure onto that, and that's what keeps it from ever sliding out. Under pressure. Under pressure. All right, again, I won't quit my day job. I'm going to take the groove, I grab the string on both sides with the strap fold in half, slide it around. When it pops in, slide that out, come down here, place the, turn the axis wheel to 170, put it in over that dot, and I'm getting, what am I getting? I can't find it. Minus 5, look at that. Minus 5, you have another dot of astigmatism correction, I'm going to check for the second curve in the lensometer. And we are at, hang on, the camera moved and it shifted my vision. We are at minus six, so that is cut perfectly. 
Now this is the portion in every video that as I clean your lenses, I mention that this purchase is tax free and you also include free shipping anywhere in the US and Fort Myers, Florida is in the US. But again, people are having to charge tax for online sales now in my state of North Carolina, oh, your PD. In North Carolina, your PD is 73. I'm gonna turn the card around, place the PD stick against my thumb and we hold it up to the left lens. We're getting 73 millimeters. I wanna check the optical center height of 26. And let me turn that around so you guys can see. Place the PD stick against my thumb and then we look at the bottom of the lens. That is 26 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. That is at 26, cut perfectly. But as I was alluding to, all purchases are tax free. So in North Carolina, sales tax is about 7.5%. I don't know what it is in other states. But if your purchase was $657 times 7.5%, that would add $49 onto the purchase of your glasses that you do not have to pay. Anytime you buy glasses from me in North Carolina, you're always going to be tax-free. Not even Amazon can do that in North Carolina. Only me, because they don't sell free prescription lenses. Well, that's, they don't have a website name. They're called Amazon. Do you know that the first name of Jeff Bezos' company was Cadabra? Short for Abra Cadabra. But he was on the phone with uh, his accountant telling him the name of his company that he was starting. And he said the name of the company is Cadabra. He said, what did you say? Cadaver? Like a dead body on a slab. He knew instantly he needed to change the name. That's when he came up with Amazon. But again, I do not charge tax. I also do free shipping, but I'm going to get these in standard alignment, also known as a three-point stance. But when you get these in the mail mark, there's a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. So if th this is true, just stop by your local optical shop and just ask them to adjust the frame. 99% of all optical shops do free adjustments. It doesn't matter if you bought the frame from them or not. It only takes about 30 to 45 seconds to adjust a pair of glasses perfectly, but I'm going to get these in a three-point stance, also known, well, I just said a three-point stance, standard alignment. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. And again, I don't have a pair of glasses to show you the wobble on on me. I'm part of that 80%. But the amazing thing about these Oakley Pilot Temples, is called a Pilot Temple, because if you can imagine a fighter pilot with a helmet on, you can slide these temples on and off without taking your helmet on and off like you would have to do with a skull temple that was adjusted that curved down. For those of you keeping score at home, I am wearing the Oakley 8132 cross range switch in color 02 universe blue because I'm all about me some blue orange. Those are my colors, y'all. Live with it and go. Okay, so. But I'm going to flip this over, make sure there is no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly and neither temple is askew like that. Check the tension. That looks good. So this is what you're... By the way, I send out a selfie request. I have your picture on the website. I also send out cleaning instructions, not only for your frame and lenses, so they'll last you for years, but for the Oakley cleaning cloth that I provide, the premium microfiber cloth that I provide, well, that Oakley provides, that I provide, and instructions on how to make sure that your case lasts you for years. No other seller on the internet does that. I am told by the people who do repeat purchases from me. But I field test every cleaning cloth to make sure that it works. So if you get these in the mail and you see a wrinkle mark, you know this works. You can't tell me you can't clean your lenses with it. And besides, who has time to reach into my pocket and pull out mine? You don't want me to use mine. By the way, I don't ship the blue because the print is so dark. They, they screwed me on this. You can't read that. It's a bad omen when you get a pair of glasses and you can't read what's on there. And you can barely read what's on here because they made the print too small. I've reordered some. I bought a thousand of these. I'm eating the cost of those and I ordered some more. Hey, it's all, everything in life is a, is a learning process. That's fine. But this is what your lenses look like before I have activated them. Here's another teaching moment. So you have the transitions extra active with the blue flash mirror. I have transition signature 7 with Crizal Sapphire. Yours just looks like Crizal Sapphire on steroids. You have a really cool blue anti-glare coating on there. So, but your original... 
The Transitions Extra Active retain about 5 to 7% hue while indoors. My Transition Signature 7 have about 3 to 5%, and your original Oakley lenses have about 1 to 2%. They all absorb a certain amount. So, but you can. Even though that looks darker on a white background, you can barely see anything while you're wearing it. If you have any pigment in your skin, anyone out there, and I said this earlier in the last video, and I'm not making light of people who have albinism, but if you would almost have to be an albino with, so, with no pigment in your skin to see any color to the lens. It doesn't matter if it's my Signature 7 or Mark's Transitions Extra Active. But let me go ahead and show you what they look like. I'm going to expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light. Now again, you have a little bit of a blue reflection indoors. Really, really cool blue style mirror. Again, it looks just like Crizal Sapphire on steroids. I'm going to activate them, meaning I'm exposed them to a strong burst of UV light. Now, as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to darken. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now, Mark and everyone else out there, pay attention, even though I repeat this in every video. All transition lenses will get dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first two weeks that they're exposed to the sun. After that, they'll work for years at maximum performance. The only time that transitions don't work 100% is if you're behind the windshield of a car. Now, my Signature 7 lenses will not get dark at all. Mark's extra active lenses will get 30 to 50% dark behind a windshield. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, all of the lenses will darken. But your windshield has UV protection that would cause your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun, and that's why they don't get dark in a car. Now, all transition lenses are temperature sensitive, meaning they will get darker when it's 85 degrees and below than they will when it's 95 and above. But I remind everyone, when it's 100 degrees outside, you're miserable, they're miserable, nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees. Having said that, Extra Active will get darker in hotter weather because they're designed for extra active people. Now, Mark lives in Fort Myers, Florida, so that is critical. He gets a lot more hotter weather than most, so these will get darker in Florida temperatures. Everyone else out there, they'll still get dark where you're from, too. But this is the first time they've been activated. That looks really cool. So when you look out, Mark, you see a dark gray. When people look at you at certain angles, they're going to see that blue mirror. Now, it's not like the classic Ray-Ban blue mirror that, that is blue in every angle. You have to get it just right. So, but still, great alternative to having to wear sunglasses all the time. To have a clear lens that will practically turn into this, this mirror coating. Let me put that back in there. Speaking of mirror coatings... This person got the purple green mirror coating on theirs. So at different angles that turns purple, different angles that's green. Same thing on this one. So really nice technology. Now this comes in silver, gold, green, blue, red, or pink. I've done all the colors except pink. Somebody out there please order pink so I'll see what that looks like. But you can see as I keep talking they're lightning and lightning. Come on, they're going to get darker in this. Come on Mark, we talked about this. Um, but again, indoors, back to a minute to a minute 15, there will be back to 5 to 7% hue. So, if you've liked what you've seen and you want to see more of these, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as FreePrescriptionLenses.com. On Twitter as FreeRxLenses. If anyone out there who listened uh, to what I had to say earlier, if there's an Oakley frame that you want, model, size, and color, email me at FreePrescriptionLenses at gmail.com or simply click the contact me button. I will respond back once I check the availability of the price and uh, the color and size that you want like I did for Mark. Um, or you can leave a question or comment in the comment section below. So Mark in Fort Myers, Florida, thank you for the purchase of the Oakley 5142 pliers in the 54 eye size. Again, this comes in, I believe, in a 51 or 52. It comes in about six colors. This one is color O2 Pewter. And everyone else has got a chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.